silence, the team will take the field honoring those lives by carrying American flags. Leading the team on the field will be senior Brian Rodriguez, who upon graduation will be enlisting in the United States Marine Corps. Please join us now in a moment of silence. Now we ask everyone to please rise, remove any hats for the singing of the National Anthem performed by the North Quincy and Quincy Combined Choir. attention to the middle of the field for the coin toss. Well, hello everyone and welcome to Veterans Memorial Stadium where tonight the North Quincy Red Raiders will play host to the visiting Highlanders of Somerville High School. My name is Jonathan Caleri. I want to thank you for tuning in to this edition of QA TV Sports. I'm being joined up in the booth by Damian Ricci. And uh, Damian, uh, it's kind of weird having football twice in a season here, well, or in, in, it's twice in a year, I should say. Uh, just a couple of months ago, at the end of April, North Quincy was finishing up their, uh, their fall two season for, that was supposed to be played last fall, and uh, right back into action again here this fall. But I think they're, uh, they're maybe excited to get out there twice in a year to play. Yeah, it's. Um, I was gonna say it felt it felt like a pretty warm for February. <laughs> that's usually when, that's when we all started last year. But yeah, no, thank goodness football is uh, back at the regular scheduled program. All right, so uh, out on the field here today are the captains for the Raiders and for the Highlanders. Uh, out there for North Quincy is number 44 Matt Craig. Number 66, Brandon Baker. Number 88, Colm Gary. And number 28 for the Raiders, Thomas Murray. Uh, looks like Somerville won the toss, and they elected to defer to the second half. North Quincy will receive, and they're going to defend the south end zone. And Somerville will be defending the north end zone. You know, it's funny. A lot of people argue that Belichick was the guy that started that whole deferring um, trend that's in all levels now but I always thought it was a good move I always felt I always liked that move it's like you know you get the ball in the second half well there's know. always that you know the Belichick debate about you know try to get the last possession of the second quarter then you can turn right around yeah. get the first possession of the third quarter and uh, maybe you know get a plus a 14 point swing plus I've always been a defense guy so it's like here take the ball now we get to get it right back right right yeah <laughs> that certainly makes sense 
All right, so uh, teams are out in the field here again. Uh, first game here at Veterans Memorial Stadium. This game was originally supposed to be played at Somerville, uh, but the field at Somerville was undergoing some renovations, and it wasn't going to be ready in time for tonight's game. So it got moved here, I think it was about a couple weeks ago when it got announced it was going to be changed. Uh, so I think uh, the Raiders... Dillboy Stadium in, in uh, the Arlington-Somerville line. So uh, yep. going under some renovations. So Raiders um, kind of getting an extra home game almost, if you will. Um, yeah. So uh, happy uh, for that. I'm not going to lie. I, I'm, I, I'm not a fan of Somerville's uh, color schemes. From the, It's not the Somerville I grew up with. They have the, the uh, almost like uh, Quincy colors, with uh, but more red, but that brighter blue. Now, it's, now it looks like... I see some some of that old blue, and now they have darker blue helmets. It's like when the Bills kind of didn't know which blue they wanted <laughs> to stick with. All right, so we're underway here at Veterans Memorial Stadium. Nice kick there going deep. And it's going to be fielded by North Quincy yeah. at the five-yard line, right up the middle and of the field for a nice a lot return of here. Spread. Ooh, all right, yeah. And it looked like it was – get the number so. there for North Quincy. And it looks like it was number 22 for the Raiders, Hunter McIsaac, who brought it back for the Raiders. And they're going to start at about their own 35. Yeah, nice lane developed there for um, for North. Uh, no, next uh, kick return, something that they're probably going to be thinking of. Or Summer will definitely need to close it up a little faster. 22, John, you mentioned how uh, you know North, North wrapped up their season towards the end of spring, but... Somerville had one game last year, and it was much later, closer to the Four summer. The Greater Boston the League started their their season at the end of April. Yeah, so it's weird they only had one game there. Our handoff goes to McIsaac on the first play of the game, or first play from scrimmage, I should say, and maybe a gain of one got wrapped up there. Nice job by Somerville. Yeah, was, that definitely looked like a, a missed block, I'm sure. That young man is going to get spoken to by his coach. <laughs> All right, so McIsaac again, and she's going to spot the ball. Yeah, we'll say it's a gain of one, just shy of the 37. North Quincy in the spring finished with a record of four and two with victories over Dennis Yarmouth, Hanover, Quincy, and Silver Lake. And uh, well, we already have a timeout. Let's see who called it. Timeout in the field. So missed what happened there, but so it is a timeout with 11:16 uh, here in the first quarter. Timeout down on the field. When we come back, we'll be for the uh, ref to indicate who called it. See, so, yeah, I don't know if we, <laughs> I don't know if we missed it or not, but I was looking. <laughs> so un an unknown timeout. Yes. So this is uh, the. 19th time these two teams have played North Quincy and Somerville. North Quincy leads the all-time series by a score of 12 to 6. I have to give credit to uh, Martin Dunham, who's on the coaching staff of North Quincy. He was able to pass along a whole bunch of information for tonight's game. So we want to thank Martin for that. Our right, handoff over to the left oh, side. He's got it. Number That's 44, Matt Craig, one of the captains of the team, and he's going to go all the way in for the touchdown. Wow, Matt Craig yeah. explodes over to the left those, side. That those safeties. Um, I mean, they opened that up, but those Somerville safeties bit up way too fast on that. So a huge touchdown there from Matt Craig. Also, North, uh, I don't think North came out of there. They, they ran uh, mostly like a power eye last year. So it was a 64-yard touchdown for Matt Craig on the second play for a scrimmage. And North Quincy quickly up 6 nothing. Yeah, a pretty decent kick return, about 25 yards. And then, uh, yeah, 64-yard touchdown right through the uprights. It's going right. to be uh, a long night for Summerall. <laughs> <laughs> Extra point there by Thomas Murray is good. So, again, with 11.05 here in the first quarter, North Quincy comes out quickly with a 7 to nothing lead. North Quincy starting off this year with two home games uh, here tonight 
with Somerville. And then next Saturday, September 18th, they'll be hosting Westwood High School uh, at the stadium. So nice opportunity here for the Raiders to try to get two early victories, both at home, and start off strong. Then um, on the third week of the season, they have a tough game, Damian. They're going to be going to Abington High School, uh, usually yeah. a pretty powerhouse down here in the South Shore, in the South Shore League, and they'll be going down there to face Abington. Yeah, Abington, uh, I have many years' experience with them. Very well-coached team. Um, they run a double wing with a lot of misdirection. And they're general, to be real, they are really pretty tough kids, so that's going to be a tough game. Head coach Ryan Craig, um, in an interview with the Patriot Ledger a couple weeks ago, said that you know he thinks North Quincy has uh, has arrived here the last the spring season. You know they came out ready to play, and he thinks they're going to be even better right now. And said that you know they want to play some of the best teams because in order to be a good team, you got to play the good teams. So um, went out there and uh, you know again Abington, one of the best teams around. So going yeah. out there to play them. Well, the other thing too is now it's going to be really interesting to see with the new playoff format. Um, because it's no longer south, north, um, central, west. It's the entire state. And, um, you know, so North Quincy didn't get moved, right? Or did they go up a division? I honestly, I'm, I'm not, I don't rec remind, I can't remind yeah. myself. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll have somebody look that up. <laughs> but, um, you know, th there is a chance, based on how this format's going to be, of like the best of 16 across the state in that division or might be even less, uh, best of eight, that North could end up going, you know, out to Pittsfield to play their first game of the playoffs right? based on this new format, or vice versa. Yeah, and North is certainly, you know, expecting to make the playoffs this year, you know, and Coach Craig was mentioning that as well. This is his fourth season as head coach for North Quincy, and uh, has certainly turned around for the Raiders. Uh, you know, unfortunately for a few years, or for a number of years before Coach Craig came in, they had, uh, you know, a lot of losing seasons. And right away when Coach Craig came in, changed the culture of the program mm -hmm. and has turned it around very quickly here uh, to the delight of all North Quincy fans. And you can actually see it on the players on the field, too. His first season, there weren't as many players on the field. Now there's about 70 players in the program. And a big play there by number 66 for North Quincy, blowing up that play was Brandon Baker, came right into the backfield. And it's going to be a loss on first down for Somerville, back to the 13. Yeah, it looks like um, Somerville is running the, uh, the read option. Uh, most Patriots fans will be familiar with that after spending a year with Cam Newton. Um, but that QB looks like he held on to it too much or didn't give it to the running back. And, yeah, those D tackles closed in on him pretty fast. Ball's marked at the 13-yard line. Let's see the offense. They're going to... Ooh, they got quite the bunch between the tackles in the backfield. It's actually a very uh, good speed on that running back. Yeah, handoff goes to Goonsley Luis. Over to the right side, and he's going to get across the 20 up to about the 23. Reminds me very much of the Salem offense in the 90s under Coach Perrone. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take your word for it. So one of the uh, best programs the state has ever had. It was a nationally ranked team, and they by no means were they you know big monsters on the line or anything. They were very much an average-sized high school. All right, third down and about six now for the Highlanders. Quarterback for the Highlanders is number 17, Aiden Slattery. It looks like they're committing to this 4-4, uh, which I think is a good call. Looks like, ooh, that looks like there's some movement there before the snap. But Our handoff goes to Luis again over to the right side. I'm looks like a loss there. And let's see where they spot the ball. Looks like it's going to be no gain, so no gain there. What are you thinking, John? Punt or go for it? Yeah, Pull Tom Brady and throw a Hail Mary before yeah. halftime? <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like they are going to send out It the looks like personnel team. changes, yep. so yeah. Now, based on that kickoff, if I was North Quincy, I'd be foaming at the mouth to try to uh, get a good lane going here. All right, Jacob Rodriguez, number 21, will go back to kick it away for the Highlanders. 
Hunter McIsaac is back deep for North Quincy. Good snap. Oh, oh it goes off wow. the side of his foot, and North Quincy's just going to let it go. They're going to get away from it. Yeah, that's very unfortunate for uh, Somerville. Uh, nothing gets an offense going more than getting the ball on the right side of the 50. So a tough break there for Somerville. Again, Rodriguez just went off the side of his foot. And North Quincy will get the ball at the Somerville 35-yard line. That's too bad. It looked like a good snap, too. So, poor punter. I was watching Rodriguez kick in pregame warm-up, yeah. and he was ready to go. Somerville not ready here in the it's play. Like McIsaac gets the carry over to the right side, and he'll get across the 30 up to about the 28. Somerville was a little slow getting out of their huddle. Six-yard gain. Pick up six yards in the play. Ball's marked at the 29-yard line. Down. Now, Somerville, like I said, they had one game. They had, I, I believe, something like 15 or 16 kids last year, and then the um, their season ended. So it's, you know, it, it's obviously a rebuilding team. Um, and it's those, the, those little things like that, like you said, John, not even being ready when the ball's ready to go, um, that you can see the difference on the field. All right, McIsaac again on the carry for North Quincy. Gets across the 20 up to about the 19-yard line, and it'll be a first down for North Quincy. I neglected to mention that the quarterback for the Raiders is number 10, Cooper Hansen, senior for North Quincy, leading the team out here again. Actually spot the ball at the 18-yard line. Somerville looks like they're doing a three-man front, which well, I think that speaks for itself right there. <laughs> so Craig on the carry, this time for North Quincy over to the right side, gets inside the 10 up to about the six-yard line. Now, the problem now if you're North Quincy is you're going to start playing a vanilla offense because you don't want to – you're going to have to give this tape to – I forgot who they're playing ne next week. Severian? Uh, Westwood. Oh, Westwood, yeah. <laughs> also, we're Severian. <laughs> In Westwood, <laughs> Severian, <laughs> yes, yes. Um, so, you know, hey, it's – everybody plays to win. Ideally, you don't want to uh, show all, all your uh, cards on the first game. Oh, it's already jumped. Leg on the play. All right, and nice it cadence like there by Quincy jumped. I thought I thought I saw the. Uh, no, it was it was the. Oh, that, 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 that went against Somerville. I think the uh, the umpire just moved it in the wrong direction there. Oof. So it was a. Maybe the umpire uh, hasn't played a game since April. Well, he's moving it again. Three moves for the umpire. <laughs> All right, so they can move it up to the three yard line. Yeah, I mean it's like I said, you can just tell it's it's a it's generally a, a new newer program. Um, but nice little warm up for North Quincy to start the season. All right, McIsaac on the carry, and let's see, he's gonna be just shy of the goal line. You know, spot him down. Looks like inside the one yard line. Uh, they'll spot him right down at the one exactly. Give a second down and one. A second down and goal at the one yard line. All right, so we'll bring up second and goal from the one. Gosh, it's so funny. Like, um, so it was the end of the spring, too. It was still like sunny out at seven o'clock. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know, right? Yeah, it's <laughs> funny. It's, it's dusk. <laughs> the mosquitoes are out. I can see your screen there. Uh, Quarterback Cooper Hansen under center, and he'll and keep it that's himself. Just, there, that is. So Hansen just pushes it right in from the one-yard yep. line, and North Quincy does a nice job there to take advantage of the uh, bad punt off the side of the punter's foot. Short field, and North Quincy punches it in for six points with 5.27 left to go here in the first quarter. Yeah, there's no X's and O's with that. It's just push the guy in front of you in the white shirt, and... Uh, Somerville's not going to win that point of attack. Like I said, this is going to be a long night for them. Number 28, Thomas Murray. All right, Thomas Murray comes out for the extra point attempt for North Quincy. Quincy. 
All right, good snap, good hole. Kick good is kick. up, and it yep. is good. Nice job there by Murray, a strong kicker for the Raiders. And North Quincy now takes a 14 to nothing lead as they get ready for the kickoff back down to Somerville. Do you remember that kicker from Silver Lake? That kid was the second best kicker I've seen in like my high school refing and coaching career, I would say. This was this, uh, that kid from Milton Academy that um, went to Notre Dame. Well, it makes sense why he was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> that Silver Lake kid was clearing the uh, fence behind the, uh, like the netting behind the uprights. North Quincy had a uh, kicker, and I'm, I'm, I'm blanking on his name from a couple of years ago, but he was doing the same thing. He was, he was really Just booming it. it. Yeah, he, he was an excellent kicker. Um, and, oh, man, I'm completely forgetting his name right now, and I wish I could, could bring it up in my memory. No. Maybe Bill Chuck would grab him and uh, yeah. he cuts his current kicker. Well, let's see if uh, some of them can get something going, at least some special teams. Um, now, if I was north, I would just squib it right down the middle and let them see what they have. Number 28. Thomas Murray in the kickoff. Well, we'll see what happens here. Again, Murray will get ready to kick it away for North Quincy. Oh, looks like a, a little bit of offside, but it's fine for first game. All right, field up by uh, Somerville over to the left side. Goes the ball carry. You're going to get up to about the 29-yard line. Fiendi Francois on the carry yeah, on good the return. Ball. Good little pickup. For the return for Somerville, taken down by... Gave North a pop on the way down. So, maybe someone can get something going from this. First down and 10 for Somerville. I always thought... Some roles should have in these days of new uniforms, since they are the Highlanders, their uh, accent color should be like plaid or something, like a kilt. <laughs> I think it would look pretty cool. Be That'd like be a, like an accent. accent. Yeah, it'll be you know go with it. Be like the Oregon. Like that's what I love about the Oregon Ducks. Always willing to change. Yeah. At the whim of Nike's will. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a little bit of a spread going for uh, Somerville, which with that penetration they were getting. Ugh. A right, quick pass uh, over to the left side. Was looking for number nine, Tenzin Gassar, and could not connect. And quarterback Aiden Slattery. Yeah, that ball floated up, which means he was moving backwards when he committed that throw. Reminds me of a young Mac Jones. We got a second down and 10 for some of them. All right, yeah, second down and ten. Continuing with that spread. Now you could run an option out of this too. So let's see what they do if they're going to try to mix it up. Maybe give it a running back. Oh, pass over the slant. middle and that wide open over the middle is Francois, and it's complete up to the North Quincy 45-yard line. Nice job there by the Highlanders. And first down. Jones safe, safety is closing that down for North Quincy. Those are one of those risky things. People think a little 10-yard slant and that's it. But man, if those safeties uh, jump too far in that. You're looking at nothing but daylight. Number five, Nate Caldwell in on the tackle for the Raiders. Yeah, some rules keeping keeping with the spread, might as well. Their O line can hold up. They can be looks like they can be semi productive with this. Oh, they missed that D end. Oof. Oh jeez. <laughs> All right, quarterback had to come up. He said Damien, he got pressured from the outside. It was Colm Gary coming up from the uh, end position, and he stepped up into the pocket, but the Raiders there were, uh, the rest of the D-line came up to sack him. So it's gonna be a loss on the play back to the 41-yard line. And for 77, Reem Biko in on the tackle. The oh, Craig probably is thinking, you know, hey, you're gonna play the Pick spread, I can run one-on-one -on, -one on you and, and give you pressure until you can middle. stop that pressure. <laughs> Which is not a bad strategy to have. Looks like it was uh, number 77, Rayan Biko, who came up to make the sack. Biko, a senior on the Raiders team. So it brings up now a second and about 15 for the Highlanders. Under four minutes to play in the first quarter. Quick pass again over the middle and incomplete. Went through the hands of the attendant receiver, Francois. And just couldn't bring it in. There were two Raiders right there, the, ready to make the hit, though. Same play that got them that first down last time. But 
Yeah, like um, like I was saying, it's North Quincy is gonna. You have five. We'll bring six. Can your quarterback read and react fast enough? Until they can do it, you might as well play that hand. What would be a good accent color for for the Raiders, John? Besides the. The red and black or whatnot? Yeah, like, you know, like the kilt colors. Oh. <laughs> North Quincy almost jumped off sides. They were able to hold. Good job with someone not moving. Kind of hard, especially for the center when somebody jumps in your face. You only have one hand to protect yourself. It's like calling timeout. And actually, it looks like a delay of game on Somerville. Delay on the play. Delay of game against Somerville. Be a five yard penalty. Uh, I see the Somerville. I see the Somerville uh, coach looking at the uh, the back judge, and I think I know what he was thinking. That back judge um, should be bringing his hand up and down to indicate the seconds for the quarterback, and I, I think he may have had a little lapse there and forgot to do that. I know they usually they bring one hand up at 10 seconds, yeah. right? Most guys kind of do the clock, so you get that you get that knowing. You gotcha. Know. They they were supposed to make the um, the play clock mandatory in the field, but so many schools said that it would. Uh, it would oh, jeez! Oh, big sack there for that North Quincy. Cool. Coming up was Grant Murphy from the end position. Came flying up and brings him down. Huge play there for Grant North Quincy, Murphy. all the way back to the 20. Let's see, make him down the 27 down yard line. The 27 yard line. Yeah, Quincy is really bringing um, a lot of heat from the outside edges. If I mean, some will, they'll probably adjust by trying to do something up the middle. Um, if they're committing to that outside rush like that, but we'll see how they how they go second half. Hopefully, this punter can uh, redeem himself. I'm sure, he's thinking about that. Oh boy! <laughs> All right, again, he goes off the side of his foot. He was being pressured, and it's going to stop at the 42-yard line. So another tough break there for Somerville. It's not an easy job kicking that ball. <laughs> kicking a weird, oval, pointy ball. <laughs> well, especially, again, you can see North Quincy. They're getting pressure up the middle. Yeah. Um, a lot of guys move to that rugby style, too, where even, like, the, the blockers are kind of flowing in a direction. And um, a lot of teams like that, too, because if you have an athletic kid punting the ball, it, it, you know, that could easily turn into, like, a bootleg pass or just run with it. But that play, too, the North Quincy had a lot of pressure coming off the uh, the right side. All right, play action fake there. Cooper Hansen looking to pass downfield. Oh. Has a man, Cole Gary, oh, wow. and into the end zone go the Raiders. Nice play there. Great roll out there by Cole, excuse me, by Hansen. And nice pass downfield. Cole Gary was open at about the 10-yard line and pushes it in for the touchdown. Gary got behind the defender. Hate to say it for some role, but this is going to be one of those games that, like, uh, right now at halftime in the North Quincy locker room, the uh, sophomores and whatnot are tying their shoelaces and taking off the, that extra hoodie they have, knowing that they're probably going to get in this game. And that's the other thing Craig wants to probably consider is how much, how long am I going to burn my starters? I'm sure for the first game he wants to get him some some time to get so, the rust yeah, off of it. You know they had they had two uh, two that I know of uh, scrimmages beforehand and some multiple team camps like workouts together. So um, yeah, no, no doubt you want to get all that rust off, but you also don't want to. It's always in the back of your head because you know God forbid a kid twists his ankle on a, a needless you know run if you're up by 30 points. All right, well, with 2.50 left to go here in the first quarter, North Quincy strikes again, and they now lead 21-0 over the Highlanders. When we remind all of our viewers, you can uh, catch the replay of this game on Quincy Access TV by logging onto our website at QATV.org. Also, the games will be replayed on QATV Channel 8 this coming week. 
And you can look at our program schedule for when it will be, again, replayed on QA TV 8. Hopefully this season, too, we won't, um, you know, it's always in the back of every coach's head, too, is the whole COVID issues that are coming up. Off of the Raiders, number you know, um, Thomas Murray. I heard Rockland had an issue already. They were playing an out-of-state team, and that, that team had uh, some COVID problems. Apparently someone just walks in not knowing that we're live. <laughs> All right, kickoff field at the 10-yard line by Somerville. And nice pursuit there by North Quincy. Try to see who's bringing it back for Somerville. Looks like it was number 11 again, Fiendi Francois, on the return for Somerville. And so you're going to spot the ball so down at about the 21 yard line. So Somerville had some, sex with, some success with that quick slant in the middle. Like I said, if I, I would try to, they're going to, Quincy, North Quincy is going to bring pressure from the outside. So maybe this quarterback can run up the middle. Try to keep them honest on that end. But we'll see what, they, what adjustments they make. Notice in uh, Somerville, their, their right guard is also their inside linebacker. Um, big fella. Probably gets tired. <laughs> it's like a, a young LeVon Kirkland. All right, and handoff goes over to the left side. And ball carry is going to get pushed out of bounds at about the 25-yard line. Orlinski Philemond on the carry for the Highlanders. And they just spot him out at back to the 24. Pick up a three yards in the play. John, did you hear that Fenway Park now has an official NCAA bowl game? I saw the announcement for that today, the yeah. The Fenway Bowl. The Fenway Bowl. Held December 29th in the Northeast <laughs> in a non-dome <laughs> with I, I bet there's going to be ample room for tailgating, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, quarterback was trying to hand the ball off, and actually he pulled it back, and then he slipped as he was trying to run. Now uh, it's a tough break there for Aiden Slattery, and they say no gain actually. Going to spot him at the 24. Yeah, it looks like someone's trying to. Uh, that's two runs in a row. They're probably trying to get those linebackers to to commit to read the run instead of blitzing from the outside like that, but. You know, if you're hey, if your D line can still eat that up in the middle, keep doing what you're doing for North Quincy. So yeah, so real quick on the Fenway Bowl there, um, I'm guessing they it's they figured if the pinstripe no bowl happens or whatever they call the Yankees, down. I don't know if they even still have that because yeah. Yankee Stadium had a bowl game for a while. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's um, between the um, ACC and the AAC conference team. Yeah. Teams, so it's yeah. going to be like the University of Cincinnati versus. Oh, let's be honest. It's going to be BC and oh, oh uh, intercepted there you by keep North Quincy. That same pass and and intercepted by number 42, Brian Rodriguez, and he goes into the touchdown. Rodriguez was um, leading the team out of the tunnel at the beginning of the game. Uh, they had a short little moment of silence for the 20th anniversary of September 11th, and Rodriguez led them out because it was game, announced yeah. that he is going to be memory for him. he's going to be uh, entering the Marine Corps after graduation. So great job there by Brown Rodriguez to jump that route and punch it in for the touchdown. All right, Murray's kick for the extra point is good. So 131 here in the first quarter. North Quincy now has a 
four score lead, or four touchdown lead, I should say, 28 to nothing. Now, do you think that was, I forgot the, uh, I think it's the University of Georgia scored 102 points in a game once. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't think that's going to be happening here yeah. tonight. I mean, t so technically, for those that want to know, uh, there is a, a clock runoff rule. I, I want to say it's um, 36 points. Um, so we're not that many scores away from that. Um, Two-point conversion and a touchdown, and that clock's running nonstop. You know what always gets me, John? It's, like I said, I was always, I've always been a D guy. Even if you're up, I put in the younger guys to get some experience. Oh, I, I hate giving up points. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think no matter who you are, you don't want to give up the points when you're yeah, on the but, field. You know, but you also have to be a gentleman. And maybe that's why I am not a gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of new faces uh, for the referees, I'm noticing. Which is actually a good thing. There, there actually was a shortage of referees last season, John. Um, well, a tremendous shortage. Well, so yeah, a lot of yeah. opt-outs for the uh, the officials. I know that was an issue. It was opt-outs, and there was a lot of, it kind of, I think the whole COVID thing just put the retirement or realizing, you know, maybe it's time to hang up the, uh, the stripes. For a lot of guys, and there was suddenly a really big shortage. Our right, kick goes all the way back to the five-yard line, and is fielded by number four, Gunsley Luis, and he'll bring it back to about the 20-yard line. So, 15-yard return there for Luis. Well, their uh, their inside slant got picked. Um, the run game. They've had a couple runs to the outside. So let's see what adjustments they'll make here. They're continuing that spread offense. Which can be really effective if your quarterback is really fast. And All right, and Slattery was trying to get out of harm's way and he could not there. Number 78 for North Quincy, Sammy Acuzine. Came up and made the sack. You know, a lot of things, a uh, pet peeve of mine was when I hear people in the crowd at the high school kids because they're so used to watching the games on Sunday and, you know, that situation right there with that quarterback. Like, oh, why didn't he just throw it away? It's because he doesn't have an NFL arm. <laughs> well, yeah, he certainly you went know, different it's, things like it's, that. This it's is, tough. yeah. I know that these kids are big and they're young men, but it's it's still they're a long way away from those guys that you see on Sunday, even if some of them end up there. A big loss there for Somerville. It was about a 10-yard loss. So it goes all the way back to the 10-yard line now. About 20 seconds left to go here in the first quarter. And quarterback Aiden Slattery, senior for the Highlanders. He's going to hand it off. Philmond on the carry for the Highlanders, and he's going to get no gain there. Nice job by North Quincy's pursuit to come up and bring him down. Taken down by number 72. That's the end of the first quarter. All right, and at the end of the first quarter of play, North Quincy with a has commanding a, lead has here. A end 28 of half nothing. score. Jeez. Yeah, I know, I know. So 28 nothing at the end of the first quarter here at Veterans Memorial Stadium. You know, you know, at this point, if I was Somerville, at this point, take your shots downfield. I, I mean, what do you have to lose? Well, I think that's one something I you know. You know, look at, even just to kind of spread out the North Quincy defense a little bit yeah. and make them. Uh, Give a little bit more of a chance or, there. But yeah, or at least force those safeties to sit back. I mean, it looks like they had a couple, some speedy guys out there in the edges. You know, even, th not necessarily even connecting, but, you you know, you have a, a shot 40 yards downfield that's incomplete, and now, that's, now those safeties are going to be thinking about that. Um, I think the key thing that Swimville needs to do is probably do their, is make some adjustments to block that outside because, um, I mean, North is really committed to, to rushing from that outside, and it's it's seven against five or six against five pretty consistently.
All right, well, we will switch ends of the field here at the stadium. And it'll be a third and about 20 for Somerville with the first play of the second quarter coming up. Third down and 17 as the second quarter begins. Our teams come up to the field. Bring Slattery in the shotgun. Maybe they'll have some better luck going a different direction. There you go. Right, we're trying to throw it downfield, field, like you said, oh and it is intercepted there by Jackson Murphy, number four for the Raiders. Interception. Pass was intended for Gunsley Louis. Number four, Jackson Murphy on the interception. Murphy just Father. stepped in front and brought him down. Uh, that's just disheartening First for uh, 10, North for Somerville. Thomas Murray, number 28, on the carry for North Quincy. Clogged up there. And it looks like he's going to get back to the line of scrimmage, so no gain for North Quincy. Pick up a one on the play. He's second down in nine. Well, actually, they're going to say they're going to give him a one up to 23. So second and nine. Number 10, Cooper Hansen, quarterback for the Raiders, under center. And if again to Murray over to the right side. Murray, nice stutter step there to find the hole. And Murray gets inside the 10 up to about the eight yard line. You know, I heard previous to the game that Somerville had some transfers from Bishop Sycamore. <laughs> What a story that was. Yeah, it certainly was a, uh, yeah, yeah, a story, that, that's for sure. <laughs> I, uh, how things something like that could happen, you, you would never know. <laughs> These Somerville kids are gassed. They had to take that ride under the tunnel. As a former Somerville kid, didn't go to high school there. But it's a long ride down to the queue. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be an even longer ride back. Uh, Hannah for North Quincy Good goes back. number 34, Michael Gorman, still on his feet, trying to fight forward. And nice job there by Gorman, stay on his feet, forward momentum, Michael and going to get up to what, the two-yard line. Gets the ball inside the five-yard line, down to the three-yard line. Yeah, I mean, at this point, it's no denying uh, North Quincy is just completely in a different category than Somerville is right now. You said the, the overall historical record is 12-6. and six. Yes. This should count for four more wins. <laughs> because, um, and like I said, it's I feel bad. Um, the GBL had a weird season. They played one game. Then their season was over. A lot of youth football didn't happen. So, you know, gosh knows how many uh, freshmen they have in. Nice Murray on the carry to the, carry to the right and side, and he goes into the end zone for the and touchdown. He's just, they're not even tackling at this point. Touchdown. Well, I think, like you said, Damien, too, the biggest thing is, you know, there's only about another, you know, 15 guys on the sideline for Somerville right now. So it's, you know, really tough to have a program of about 30 guys. No, oh, yeah, um, exactly. And, you know, they do have a lot of freshmen on their team here as well. So. Oh, that's that's actually a good thing. So there's hope in that. Um, thing is, like, yeah, you know, COVID really hurt, hurt football over the last two years in terms of because of the youth stopped and then the season was weird. Uh, football numbers have been down, period, for the last couple of years. So it's good that they have a lot of freshmen. Um, another kick right down the middle. Oh, over the net. 
into the land of ticks. <laughs> uh, ball boy better spray off of on himself before he hits there. But, you know, I know, like, uh, for teams like this, they can uh, apply to the MIAA for uh, schedule relief. You know, Somerville obviously is a big city like Quincy and has a big population, but, you know, that doesn't necessarily translate into um, the football team on the field, you know. Um, and so, you know, Somerville will probably be better off playing smaller schools than the likes of North Quincy. <laughs> Well, unfortunately for Somerville, they have a lot of big schools on their schedule yeah, next week. GBL, and yeah, so. next week they go to at Everett. So, yep. it, um, you know, it doesn't get any tougher for that for the most <laughs> part, going to Everett. You know, again. How's Everett? Are they? <laughs> <laughs> I've heard they're usually pretty good. So, so funny, um, but I went up um, a little while ago. I went up I went up to Everett to scout a team that we'd be playing. And uh, I didn't know that the game started at 6 instead of 7. And I got on the field and I looked at the uh, at the Everett at the Everett team and um, I was like, "Wow, these kids are huge!" And then um, somebody must have overheard me and they said, "No, no, no, that's the JV. They came in. <laughs> they came in and at uh, after Ed. halfway through the second quarter. I'm oh. like, oh, jeez, <laughs> what did varsity look like?" <laughs> Kicking off for the Raiders, number 28, Thomas Murray. All right, Murray kicks nice it deep kick. for North Quincy and field by Somerville at the seven yard line. Return over to the right side. Oh, there's a lot of red shirts coming around. Him. Yep, good job on North Quincy in that. And Louis will get up to the Somerville 25 where they mark him down. Somerville brings up to the 25 yard line. It'll be first down and 10 for Somerville. Once upon a time, Damien, uh, mm -hmm. Somerville and Quincy, no, excuse me, in North Quincy and Quincy as well, they were all in the in the GBL. Yeah. Once upon yeah. a time. And uh, were, it's back in the, the 60s and 70s, that's when they were in there um, in, in that same league. Um, there was talk about revitalizing that. Oh, good hustle on number four there. Um, keep your shoulders down, though, kid. You're going to get popped like that. Um, yeah, you know, and I, I've, yeah, I heard about that once upon the time uh, era. And uh, tremendous, um, you know, when I was up in Cambridge, they actually talked about the basketball rivalry between um, the Quincy's and Cambridge. Yep. Back in the day. And, um, there was talk about bringing that back and making it big um, and adding Brockton to the mix, um, but it, it never panned out. I think the problem is with this new playoff format, John, is that good hustle. Oh, nice run here by Old number 12. Onto that ball, 12. Orlinski Fildmond for the Highlanders. Picks up a first down, had a nice stutter step over to the left side. Gets across the 35 up to the 37, and that will move the chains. That looks like a pretty big kid to be a running back. Uh, we don't have his actual stat, like his uh, size in front of us, though. But looks like a D end. <laughs> Going back to those those Cambridge rivalries that you're talking about, you know, yeah. when Patrick Ewing played yeah, at Richmond, yeah, Latin, that's exactly the first thing they brought up. Yeah, um, you know, he played at North Quincy High School, and you know that gym was packed mm -hmm. when, when he was at, at North Quincy. Um, you know, and a lot of people were mentioning that, that that was like, you know, the most people that were ever in there trying to pack into that gym. Uh, and then, actually, probably not that long ago, recently, you know, Quincy North Quincy have had some really big games where they had to bring out those extra bleaches that were usually tucked away. And yeah. uh, it was really uh, great games that they had. Oh, there. Ball comes fumble. loose. Quarterback was running that read option, like you said, Damien. And he was making for a second effort. He got hit, and it comes loose. It'll be North Quincy ball. This, uh, you know, like I said, the, I'm watching Somerville. I feel for them. Maybe if they have some plaid, <laughs> they'd have uh, better luck. I, I'm going to push for that all the time. Um, you know, it's just there's a lot of little things that this coaching staff is going to look at this film and hopefully tweak with them. But like I said, for having ba basically no season, um, to, for, you know, it's about 30 kids out there, like good on them. 
for coming out, and they only have room to grow. Um, North, on the other hand, gets a nice little, you know, tune-up to start the season. Timeout. All right, North Quincy calls a timeout. Looked like the wrong personnel was heading out into the field. Or I'm not too sure, but the head coach Ryan Craig calls a timeout with 7.41 left to go. And North Quincy up now 35 to nothing. QATV is looking forward to having an uh, exciting football season here at Veterans Memorial Stadium. Uh, we will be here next week when the Quincy Presidents play their home opener for this season against the Tigers of All Rames High School. Again, that'll be on Friday, September 17th. And then again, we'll be here the next day as well when North Quincy is back here hosting Westwood. Uh, both teams are away for uh, week number three. And then both teams have a bye for week four. So uh, we'll be back here on so you, October 8th. You get some uh, time off, John. <laughs> well, actually, well, on that week of the, the 24th, uh, Saturday the 25th, we'll be here for Quincy North Quincy Soccer. Oh, uh, so go. we'll be covering that. Uh, and then that the week of October 1st, we will have a, a bye week as well for us. Uh, but then again, October 8th, we'll be here when North Quincy plays Situate. October 15th, Plymouth South will come in town to face off against the Presidents. And then on uh, Halloween weekend, the 29th, Hanover comes to play North Quincy. And on the 30th, Pembroke plays Quincy High School. All right, and a quarterback now is number 12 for North Quincy, Charlie Baker. Now he'll be here Saturday too, right? For the, or is that a different one? I'm sorry, say that again? I said he'll be here Saturday, right, for the... Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, handoff wants to number 23, Jordan Mahoney. This handoff goes to Sydney Green, number 9, sophomore for the Raiders. And Green gets knocked out of bounds at about the 30-yard line. We get the 31. Raiders. Down to the 31-yard line. Third down and six. So just, they were one point away from that running clock. Um, see if they end the half that way. Oh yeah, North is in uh, Division Two. They did move up. All right, Green on the carry goes right up the middle. And looks like it's going to be just shy of the first down. We'll see where they spot the ball. And they spot it at the 26 and yeah, just shy of the first. And player down on the field for Somerville. Something we've talked about usually at the beginning of the, each season when it's a little bit warmer out here at the stadium in the beginning of September is uh, kids getting cramps. And I think that's what is happening here right now for uh, number four, Gunsley Louis. Yeah, you, you know, like I said, add that um, that bus ride. <laughs> Legs are locked up. So, yeah, uh, North Quincy's in Division Two with the new realignments. With the likes of uh, Bridgewater, Rainham, Catholic Memorial, <laughs> so that's a that's a tough tough division. Bishop Fian, which is a new up and comer. All right, quarterback keeps it for North Quincy. That's Baker, and he picks up the first down easily. Big push there by the Good offensive ball, line, Baker calls and number, Baker gets inside the number, twenty up to the eighteen. North Quincy first down. Down to the 18-yard line. First down and 10, North Quincy. We have some some big schools there. Natick, Natick, Marshfield, Mansfield, Lincoln, Sudbury. 
our. Uh, well, our Mansfield and Lincoln Sudbury always have. Uh, Marshall yeah. does too, but Mansfield's always a, uh, a powerhouse in the Hockamock League. All right, again, first and 10 for the Raiders at the 18 yard line. Handoff goes to number 23, Jordan Mahoney again. And Mahoney gets up to about the 10 yard line. We'll see if they spot him a little bit number forward. Number 23, Jordan Mahoney on the carry for the Raiders. There's a fumble on the play recovered by Somerville. Oh, so it was a fumble, a fumble. on the play. I did not oh. see that there. It uh, looked like maybe when Mahoney was going in. Oh, and actually, you no, know, he gets stripped from behind. It was a nice play there by Somerville. Looked like he's trying to get the numbers. He gets off the bottom of the pile. In my replay here it was number 11, Fiende Francois. Did a nice job of poking that ball, and Somerville will get the fumble recovery and take over. And let's see if they're going to spot the ball at the 10 yard line. That's where Somerville will start the drive. I'm out. You know how um, Super Bowl governors, like for the states, always have like a, like a wager against the other state that they're playing against? Yep. I think that should be a tradition every single high school game with the mayors or town councils. <laughs> Trying to think what, what will Somerville offer. It's usually like a food. Real quick, I just want to say that was Orlinski Philemon on the uh, the fumble, the forced to fumble. Oh, 12, yeah. He, was number 12 uh, hey, he had that good that run, behind. too. So we got to think of delicacies for. Um, or I guess just what would it, what would it be like a. Would it the easy thing be like, you know, a roast beef and a bar pizza type of thing for the. Yeah, you know, those are two. Uh, is Quincy a bar, officially a bar pizza town? I, I would say so, yes. Yeah. I mean, it's some sure. There's definitely I wouldn't call Somerville places. the hot roast beef. For those of you but that true. don't know, <laughs> <laughs> north of Boston, bar pizzas are replaced with hot roast beef sandwiches, and and the people up there have no idea what a pub pizza is. None. No. None whatsoever. Well, and, I, 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 and, and I think vice versa here with the hot roast beef because people go, it's just a roast beef sandwich. It's I, not. <laughs> and as one who grew up in Quincy, I would say yeah. the same thing. So um, I know you and I have had this debate many times yeah. with bar pizza and, and uh, a beef sandwich. Oh, oh another just again. stripped right out. And it looks like it was Jordan Mahoney who came up to make the strip there for North Quincy. And the Raiders recover. That's why I always tell ball carriers, do not wear sleeves. You'll take over first down in 10. You think you're holding on to it when you're not. It also gives it like a kind of a slick surface to sit on. So put the ball at the 12-yard uh, line. Well, it looks like uh, North is uh, bringing in the, uh, the non-starters right now. So that might be uh, the last we see. Good way to start the season, get all the rust off. Let's see if the young guys can uh, make something happen here. Keep it going. All right, 4.47 left to go here in the first half. Baker hands it off to number 21, Ben Hudak. Number 21, Ben Hudak. And Hudak's going to get Carries inside the, the 10 the to the 8. Pick up. So this is uh this will be quite the treat for um for these JV guys. Now I'm assuming I'm assuming and I don't know if you know the, John if if there was going to be a JV game between Somerville and North Quincy. Usually if the team travels a good distance like this, even though mileage wise it's not, it just is time consuming that there isn't. Um Checking the schedule now. Look at that. I am so. checking it out. I have it up here, and on Monday, they're supposed to be hosting Somerville for the JV team. At now, the you know team. what? Now, to be honest, I'm wondering if, if you said, like, like I said, there's a lot of freshmen in Somerville. They're probably going to get in in the second half. I'm wondering if that game, if this will, you know, basically this night will end with that game. Give more time for recovery. <laughs> Let's travel. The refs will be upset, though. They won't get their paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, again, Baker under center for North Quincy. And fullback belly. There we go. 
And handoff goes to number 34. That's Michael Gorman. That's why you tackle everything that comes out of the backfield. <laughs> And see, Gorman gets Michael up Gorman to the three-yard line. So, going back to the delicacy of these mayoral wages. Yep. I don't know what, what Summerall. I mean, Summerall's got a lot of good food. Not gonna lie. Um, well, I mean, may, wait, maybe Square, it would be like you know uh, the glazed bacon donut from Union Square Donuts. Well, well that's what I was gonna say. Maybe it's like a, a restaurant besides a specific specific food. Yeah. That you would you know uh, pit restaurant versus restaurant almost if you will, um, and Gorman with a carry for North Quincy again, right again. and Another, touchdown. Michael Gorman punches it in. Touchdown. Looked like on the second effort there, Somerville was able to hold him up, but Gorman fought his way through and punches it in for the six points. Yeah, at this point, close close to the sticks like that. Um, I mean, uh, the end zone. Michael Gorman. Try to keep your pads lower than the guys on offense, or else it's just going to be moving moving you back. The three-yard touchdown run. No, oh, this young man forgot that he was in the uh, kickoff. <laughs> I mean, the uh, field goal unit. Runs on the field a little late. Don't worry, young man. That's all on camera for the coach to see. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Thomas Murray comes in for the extra point, and it is good. And now we're we're at, I believe, at technically the running clock um, uh, for uh, the MIAA rules. But as of right now, it's not. Also, John, this game can end in a tie because it's a non-division. <laughs> so, well, that, I don't think that's going to be on the clock. That is a tonight. possibility. So, so, do you think it would be the uh, bacon glazed donut? That would be the like maple bacon glazed maple donut. Glazed? Yeah, maybe Anis Taqueria. I don't know. Another Somerville favorite. Um. Spikes hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I know, like, what is Qu Quincy needs to make a city dish? If if Mayor Coke is listening to this, we need an official. You know how like state bird, state flag, whatever. City, why not? City official can do, food of Quincy. Uh, the, the official city food of Quincy. What is that? Because then every restaurant should have it. You know, is it fried clams? That's probably what. Well, what, I mean, what you, might, you might say, you know, Tony's at a clam box. Yeah, up there that probably like that. Would, would be the if the there was a mayoral wage, what Quincy would would offer up some fried clams. Murray's kick. Murray kick is deep and it's going to go into the end zone for oh, the touchback. Touchback. First down and ten for Somerville. With three minutes and fourteen seconds I know, I, remaining in the first half, I am a fan of the uh, you know the bar pizza. Uh, yeah, I, I, clams are certainly good as well. But I, for me personally, fried clam bar pizza. <laughs> <laughs> so the bar pizza with fried clams on. Well, you know it's you know the. Um, uh, oh my goodness. Well, what was John Adams' favorite dish? Like mutton, <laughs> 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 porridge. <laughs> you know. Um, not in Quincy, but you know the Linwood Cafe that has their famous big bean pizza, uh, the bar pizza. I've never yeah. had it, but I know people say it is one of those weird pizzas, but it's, it's very good. Uh, but I know that's what people talk. I know, about. I know the uh, the Brits like to do uh, beans on toast. Okay. So, at least I, I learned that from when my children were younger and we watched Peppa Pig, <laughs> <laughs> and I googled it and it was, it was a real thing. Very, we're very cultured at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, my girls have been watching a show on Netflix. Uh, I think it's Bluey. And it's, uh, it's on Disney oh, Plus. Disney, yes. Yeah. I'm sorry, Disney. It's an Australian show. It's, 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 I it like is. It. It's a good I, one. I, I, I call so this No, John. It's this pros and cons. It's, it's Peppa Pig-esque, right? Okay. Where I think like the dialogue of the kids are pretty natural. but So it's funny. But the parents are way too involved. Like, they don't say no to the kids. They're like, Dad, come and play with me for like six hours. And the dad's like, yeah, let's go. 
Like, no. Dad's tired. <laughs> like, Dad wants to watch Tom Brady tonight. I have to admit, that's one thing... My kids are usually pretty good when we want to watch a football game. Yeah. They'll, they'll, oh, yeah, my they'll girls, sit down and they'll watch a little watch bit with us. Um, I don't know if it's because it's slow enough so they can see what's going on oh, in between plays. And nice run there over to the right side by Somerville. 23. Is he, was that 23? Edgar Lopez on the carry. I think it was 22, Edgar oh. Lopez. Can say another 23. Not even on the roster, it must have been that transfer from Bishop Sycamore. <laughs> All right, Lopez gets the ball up to the 29 for for the Highlanders. For those that are listening at home that don't know what happened, so um, Bishop Sycamore was a made-up high school that played IMG Academy, which is basically a sports powerhouse high school, private school, in, uh, in Florida, just outside of Orlando. And, and they um, travel the country to play the yeah. top teams in any state. They'll travel anywhere to play anyone. Now, what's crazy is the head coach of IMG, because right now it's Pepper Johnson. Okay. Okay. Former uh, Patriot coach. Yeah. Giant, great. Giant player, yep. Inside linebacker. One of uh, Bill Parcells' favorite players. Um, their former head coach left IMG to take a public high school coaching football job in San Antonio, Texas for more money than <laughs> IMG. Gosh. I think it was like 75 for the coaching job. And plus he's like now also a teacher there, so plus that salary. Texas football coach, so, you know, nice gig to have. <laughs> There we go. See, that's that's the option you want to run. Um, Raiders did a good job of picking it up. Uh, notice that that yard marker, <laughs> the down stick is right at the at the yard marker. So uh, usually you don't move it until the ref tells you to. <laughs> All right. Well, it was enough for the first yeah. down. And oh, too bad we got yes, a Highlander player is down, unfortunately. Now, yeah, back in the day, when I was a very, very young man, we would ride our bikes to see the high school games. Um, the Highlanders used to have a guy dressed like, you know, in the kilt and all and come out with bagpipes, you know, to bring the team out. And I believe he had, like, a big sword. I always thought they should have changed their mascot also to, you know, the... The very poorly made 80s sci fi Highlander <laughs> movie, which is a documentary, I believe. All right, number 55, Jason Natwali gets up slowly, but he's walking off the field on his own power, so hope that young man is okay. Yeah. Yeah, he has kind of a little gingerly walk. Like you said, cramps cramps are a real thing when it's hot. Uh, you know, in my experience with high school kids, they don't understand that hydration begins when you wake up, not 10 minutes before the game. Right, right. Chugging a gallon of water does not help. Oh, there's a... Refs are being very lenient with the offensive line of... Uh, a nice run here by Somerville. Over. Nice spin move there for extra yardage. Spins at the 45. Really He'll get it across midfield. Number 22, Edgar Lopez really on the run. Really good speed on, uh, on Lopez. Here is he. Oh, he's a senior. Now, hey, maybe that's something now. Somerville can walk out of this game. Their Edgar coach Lopez is looking at looking at Edgar and saying, yeah, maybe we need to you know build the offense more around him. Yeah, Lopez did a nice job as he was going to the right side and uh, broke away two tackles and again the spin move and gets up to midfield for Somerville. 12 seconds left to go in the half though and we're going to have a penalty against Somerville. Two receivers moved. Play going to play. 12 shot against Somerville be a five yard penalty. First down. That was one the referees had to call Damien on that yeah. one unfortunately. And with that, the clock runs, and it is going to be the end of the first half here at Veterans Memorial Stadium. With the final score of... <laughs>
All right, so at the end of the first half here, again at the stadium, North Quincy with a commanding 42 to nothing lead over Somerville. But, you know, don't tune off. This game could feasibly end in a tie, technically. Anything could happen you, in the you second could half. Witness, you could witness a tie. And, uh, very, a very rare occurrence in high school football. Well, anything could happen in the yeah. second half, and hopefully we'll have some more talk about uh, what the, um, the city food of Quincy might be and any other things that we might come up with here as well. So, And maybe some uh, talk about what's going to happen later on here in the season with North Quincy too. So, all right, hang on here. At the half, North Quincy 42, Somerville 0. Damian and I will take a quick timeout, and we'll be back with second half coverage in just one moment. everyone to Veterans Memorial Stadium. We're at the half. North Quincy has a huge lead over Somerville by a score of 42 to nothing. Where anything can happen, John. So a Anything can happen, stay, North Quincy could double the, this point. Put up 84 points. Never know. This could come back and be a tie game. North Quincy yeah. might have to march down a two-minute two minute drill to seal the win. Anything could happen. Anything is possible. You never know anything what could happen. Friday night. Friday night lights, anything can happen. However, I'm pretty confident, pretty confident <laughs> that it's not going to happen here tonight, but you never know. So, um, and actually, as we were kind of at, at half talking about different things, you and I were um, kind of talking about uh, the, the playoffs and how it's playoffs. Kind of, <laughs> playoffs. <laughs> it's kind of a little bit different this year, you know. Um, 16 you, teams. Yeah, as you said, everyone in the whole state's been divided Point, into yeah. uh, Point divisions. System. Point system. Um, 16 teams. Um, you get points for playing up. You get points for beating an opponent. And you get points for opponents you beat uh, that beat other schools. Right. So, um, 
that's Four, certainly something we'll be fourteen point max. Yep. Looking at what uh, North Quincy will be hoping here this year uh, to get into the playoffs, and we'll talk about that more in just a little bit here. All right, uh, kickoff underway here at the third quarter. Thomas Murray kicks it deep, and return there by. Uh, Somerville, excuse me, looks like they get up to about the 40, you know, they're going to say a little before the 39-yard line. So a nice return there by Somerville, and that's where we'll start the second half. So, yeah, you, you know, D2, where both North Quincy and Quincy are in, is uh, Catholic Memorial is now in Division Two. <laughs> Little old Catholic Memorial <laughs> <laughs> with their seven Division One commits. Well, again, um, Coach Ryan Craig was talking about, you know, playoffs for an expectation this year yeah. for North Quincy. Uh, again, you know, they've turned a corner, and now, you know, they're looking at um, bigger and better things for this, 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 this ball club. Uh, so they'll be looking at those playoff seedings and what might be happening here uh, throughout the entire year. And the whole, the, the whole team, not just the head coach, but the whole team, the coaching staff, the players are looking to do that as well. Our hand up here nice goes to run. Richard Beak, and nice job there um, by Beck, excuse me, Beck, and he's going to get across the 50-yard line up to North Quincy 47. Are you sure it's not? It could be. It has that silent E, right? Doesn't the <laughs> well, I don't know. May I double? Uh, uh, what, do you, what do you think it, it is there? BK, maybe? Oh, it could be BK. Yeah. See, this is why we BK. need to right, we'll we have Richard interviews Piquet. prior to the game <laughs> to get it right. All right, Piquet gets up to the North Quincy 47, so nice run there by him. <laughs> Our handoff goes to Orlinski Philmond, or Philmond, excuse me. And it looks going to be no gain there for Philemon. Robert Wallenjohn on the tackle, number 70 for the Raiders. Second down and 10 for Somerville. Somerville quarterback is Aiden Slattery, number 17. You saw on the screen there as he ran up into the field to call the play for the huddle. Slattery is a senior for the Highlanders. And he's going to give it to Orlinski. Uh, Philemon. And Philemon will get across the 45 up to about the 44. Long delay there on the, on the read option. So back to the playoffs. 31 teams are in Division Two. The top 16 point getters get placed into a basically a Sweet 16 bracket. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, feasibly, you never know. Like you could have a winning record in like four and two, um, or even three and three, and that might not get you in. But we'll see how the season plays out. Well, North Quincy, they have uh, seven games that will be going towards their, their point standings. Yeah. Again, it's, it's not necessarily the record. It's the points that are yeah. what, it, what it, we're going to get you in. Slattery passing over the middle. Excuse the me, to the right side. Yeah. And nice job there. Yeah. And it's complete to Fernandez Francois. Francois again. And Francois will pick up the first down. Gets up to North Quincy, 32. Number 11, Francois. Taken down by number 11. Dan Udak for the Raiders. Well, either way, North Quincy will be, you know, again, they're expecting to make those 16-team bracket there. I mean, based on some of those teams in there, it, they, they should. And based on, you know, who they're playing and how they did last year, they probably will make the playoffs. Now, once again, let's open up another can of worms, John. <laughs> because... You do enjoy doing yeah, that. Yeah, I do like me my can of worms. There's a big, big... um. misdirection but North kind of put the uh, kibosh to that pretty quickly. Going back to the likes of in that division too is Bishop Feehan and Catholic Memorial. Now a lot of people argue that those private schools should be in their own playoff format. Because unlike North, right, 
they can't, you know, drive a couple towns over and say, hey, you're a pretty good running back. Welcome aboard, son. Right, right. Well, I, I certainly see the argument behind that. Um, you know, I think Catholic Memorial is Division One in every other sport. I mean, yeah. I, I mean certainly in, in hockey, they're Division One, and um, I believe in basketball, they're Division One as well. Um, I, think I would think, and you know, again, they play Division One talent basically the entire time. Yeah. Uh, and you know, in the, the Catholic Conference is all Division One schools. Um, Slattery rolling out, trying to get out of harm's way, Ooh. and he's going to get a big hit there by North Quincy. And it looked like it was number 21 there, Ben Hudak. Hudak just came right in on that. By number 21, Father Aiden. Uh, but, ben you know, Hudak. it's, you know, yeah. I guess. Hudak also their running back. Kind of uh, not, a, not good to get into a foot race to the outside with a running back. So Slattery gets brought back all the way to the 34-yard line. Five minutes, and 45 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Yeah, Huda came up from, like you said, from his defensive back position there. He was covering a man downfield and ran up and brought down Slattery. Third and long now for Somerville. Slattery looking way downfield and is Ooh, incomplete. That was a, a quasi Goodwin esque push off by Somerville there. Number seven, Nate Sampson in on the defense for the Raiders. You know, the other thing for people watching at home, the uh, pass interference, both offense and defense, is very lenient also in, in high school. It has to be very blatant. I mean, you could make contact the entire way downfield. Perfectly legal. Can't face guard, but you can uh, you can punch that wide receiver's arm the whole way downfield, and that's not pass interference. And that wide receiver can punch in that cornerback's arm away the same same way. All right, fourth down. Somerville going for it. Passes and it is incomplete. Pass was intended for Francois and ball was thrown just a little too high for him. And it'll be a turnover on downs. But Somerville was uh, in North Quincy territory, so certainly we're going to go for it there on fourth down. I think uh, Francois caught a lot of red jerseys around him out of the corner of his eye. It looked like um, they were kind of pulled up there in the last second. Don't blame him. I wouldn't want to be hit by three guys at the same time either. Yeah, it was coverage downfield by Dan Hudak and also Will Conley for the Raiders. <coughs> North Quincy looks like they only have 10 men out in the huddle trying to get their 11th guy out there. Well, you know, like I said, these aren't the starters right now. So first game of the season. Yeah. So and so the like I said, these kids probably didn't expect to get this much playing time. They're, they're probably trying to get a lot of guys mixed in here to get some some experience under the lights. Happens to the best of them. Our handoff goes up the middle for North Quincy. Now are we are we on everything? Uh, everything is is back to normal basically now that this is an outdoor event and Quincy is the concession stands open. Um, yeah, looks like concession stands are open here at the stadium and uh, as far as I know, it's popcorn and soda and just like an enjoyable fall evening. I, I, I believe so. I'm getting. I'm not 100 percent aware of every single <laughs> COVID rule. It's kind of tough to feel what's what every well, day. Full, fullback again. Yeah, number 41 on the carry here for North Quincy. Alan Guan and nice run here by Guan. Still Keep on his feet, crosses his legs. Yeah. Field. yeah. And Guan will get up to the Somerville 48 yard line. Nice run there. They faked the pitch. Did North Quincy. And uh, Baker handed it off to Guan, and Guan just brought it right up. And they're going to say Guan was down actually at midfield. You know, I, I always appreciate the fullback. I um, know a lot of the, in the pros, it's kind of died out. And, you know, colleges always kind of adapt to the pros. And as kids run more of a – law schools like to run, you know, spread offense now. But I always get that two running backs back there. Very vital position, the fullback. Oh, once again. All right, Guan again go. with a carry, and this Got time he's going to get up. hit in the backfield. Gunsley, uh, Gunsley Louis, excuse me. 
led by Francois. For some reveal, it'll be second down and 10. And so no gain on the play there for Guan. Again, nice play there by Luis to come up and make the tackle. Hopefully we can, you know, knock on wood, everything is still fine, COVID, and we can have a real Thanksgiving again here in Quincy. Hopefully, yes. I know both teams are looking forward to it. Take it down at the right, Jordan Mahoney over to the right side of the carry picks up. Nice gain there. Looks like about a gain of eight for North Quincy up to the 42 yard line. Now, do you have any QA TV traditions for the Thanksgiving Day game? Do you guys uh, have a turkey going in the truck? <laughs> no, we, uh, no, we do not, unfortunately. You gotta have something. You know, maybe get gobblers. Gobbler sandwiches or wraps, even. Gobblers, are, I think, are better in wraps. Keep, kind of keeps everything contained. Nah, I'm more of a submarine sandwich for the yeah. gobbler or for that for me. Mahoney does a nice job to get that pitch, brings it in, picks up the first down and more, it's and will get brought out of bounds. And it looks like a face mask Mahoney would be thrown nice here uh, against some of it. Well, a flag is thrown. Mahoney gets up to about the 34, but again, a flag is thrown. Now, once again, so you should throw the flag where the penalty occurred. And... Um, that's about three yards out of bounds. <laughs> so it should have been dropped on the field where it is. It looks like it's further than, you know, where it goes. Don't throw the flag at the kid. You drop it. It shouldn't, shouldn't be a fiasco. <laughs> All right, so it was a face mask against Somerville, and they're moving the ball all the way up to the 16-yard line. And that's actually the end of the third quarter as well. Oh, now the whole switching the chains. That's the end of the third quarter. This is a great opening night for the younger kids on North Quincy right now, being able to get all this playing time. Uh, you know, starters can rest their legs, hide what they what they're going to show to uh, to Westwood next week. Uh, do you have any updates on Quincy at Archie's? Um, I do not. I'll see if I can try to find something. Now, that's a, that's a far destination for them to go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. I'm trying to pull up the uh, now it's Archbishop Twitter. Williams. Was there an Archbishop Sycamore? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, posted four minutes ago, football for Quincy High open with a 39-34 win over Archbishop Williams. So a big road win there for Excellent. the Presidents. Did they, did they start earlier? Uh, maybe it was a 6 o'clock start? Yeah. So now, Damien, you, you mentioned the QATV Thanksgiving tradition. We, we may very well have to, you know, normally... There's also, you know, sausages and hot dogs that we, we pick up for the crew on Thanksgiving morning. But maybe we do have to get some um, get a gobbler sandwiches ready go to go. Yeah, something. Have Gobblers. them in the truck ready to go. Maybe a glass of cranberry juice. Just how the pilgrims <laughs> en envisioned know, it yeah. <laughs> a couple hundred years later. Out in Marymount when they... Once again, fullback. Oh, I love fullback. Go on, carry like up to the left cool. side. Yeah, keeps, keeps the defense on their toes. They have their eyes locked on the running back, and you just send that big kid, just boom. And, you know, you don't need to, to hit a home run with the fullback. Just, he, needs, just, he just needs to hit somebody. Keep everybody on it. Yeah. <laughs> old, old school style of football. Love it. You know, you talk about um, Thanksgiving and Marymount. You know, obviously, yeah. uh, Thomas, Thomas Morton, well-known from Marymount, came up here and uh, got things going here in, in Marymount, and uh, fortunately was disliked by the Pilgrims well, down in Plymouth. But, but then I think, um, as a Marymount resident, I think the Pilgrims. Nice run here by North Quincy, and yeah. gonna be just shy of the touchdown was Jordan Mahoney. Sophomore. Mahoney gets all the way up to the one yard line. Mahoney's listed at uh, 5'10", 195, good size. Well, I think we will have to have something uh, 
maybe special. We'll, we'll take a, a vote of the crew on Thanksgiving yeah. and see what they or beforehand and see what they might be interested in. And actually, thankfully, this year, um, QETV, uh, with the support of our board of directors, invested in a new production truck that will be out and about around the city of Quincy this year. Uh, Charlie Baker there, as you see on the middle of your screen, punches it in for the touchdown for North Quincy on the one-yard keeper. So uh, QETV, again, we have a new production truck. Um, the, uh, the previous one that we had here had uh, certainly been a great job for QATV and then extended past its life, so we were so, able to go out and... So, um, so where is it now? Uh, right now it's in Quincy. It's uh, parked where we normally keep the truck, and we're going to be uh, getting it out. Hopefully, if everything goes well, knock on wood, we'll have it out next weekend for... Uh, now, do you sell it or donate it? Scrap oh, it. Oh, you mean the old truck? Yeah. The old truck had to go to scrap. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, and the equipment was, was old in it. it. You know, the equipment was about 15 years old in the truck. Yeah. Uh, so it had certainly outlived its its lifespan. Um, but, um, yeah, the new one is state-of-the-art. They're all stuffed and ready to go. We're excited to get it out and, and to use it. Um, so we'll have it out and about around the city. Um, so if you... See you in the stadium, or you know, if you again different events that we hopefully will be doing. Uh, we're now what, excited what to do that. What color is the truck? Uh, it's just a white truck. Nothing uh. too special. We will be getting some some QATV logos and stuff on it, but um, that's that's in the works as well. Time all called down on the field as the North Quincy came out for the extra point attempt. And we do have that running clock now with that MIA rule. All right, North Quincy comes out for the two point attempt. Baker under center. Hands it off to Mahoney, and... Yeah, it kind of looks like they uh, initially told them to go down, which will be gentlemanly of it, keeping it out of the 50s. All right, so two-point attempt is no good there by Mahoney, but North Quincy puts up another six points on the board, so 48 yeah. nothing over Somerville. All right, got a feeling it's going to stay 48. <laughs> Yeah, clock is ticking down under nine minutes to go here in the game. You, know, I, you mentioned the gobbler sandwich now. That's yeah. all I can... Is, is I, I haven't had gobbler. one in quite a while. So I might have to uh, go out and, and get one sometime soon. That, normally, that's my go-to when I, when I go out and... A sandwich shop. I'm, I always Grab like, a like it. Yeah. You know, it's funny. You know, they're not as common as you think, though. No, I know. Not a lot of places have them. Um, it was probably, I don't know, maybe a few weeks ago, a um, group of friends that you and I are in a, a chat thread with were talking about going out and getting some Italian sandwiches. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I was all for going out with you, but I was not going to get an Italian. I was going to actually get the gobble if I went Oh, did they have it at that place? I, 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 I think so. But um, either way, I, I would have... I would have done that. I would yeah. have, I, I'm not a big Italian sandwich fan. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I would have gone with something else. I was all for yeah, going I, out. To after, a turkey sub is still my favorite go-to sub. Yep. And a gobbler just makes it better. But I think there's a lot. You know, turkey is very flexible. You can, it, it can be a warm sub like a gobbler. Yep. With a lot of flavors. Or, you know, traditional lettuce, tomatoes, mustard, mayo. I was going to say mustard pickles. Pickles, yeah. You can throw it all on it. Very, very flexible sandwich. And that squib kick up the middle. With, with you know, now you have backups playing for North Quincy, so that was more of a safety move on that end. You, you know, you don't want to deep kick when they haven't had that much uh, reps, you know, on kick on kick coverage. So, you know. Walensky Philemon on the return there for Somerville. And let's see, I think I spot the ball at the... 40-yard line, it looks like. Do we have like. another injury? Nope. I think we have another injury. Uh, yeah, looks we like do. Uh, Orlinski Philemon. I think it's another it's hurt. another cramp, yeah. <laughs> well, they got people sprinting out here <laughs> for him. Uh. So they're going to spot the ball at the 45-yard line. 
Now, how come they don't have that can of cold spray like the European soccer players? It was funny. I uh, I was friends with somebody that played in like the Euro League, and they they do that in basketball as well. And I asked him, like, does it really work? And he was like, you know, not for nothing, though. You know, if you have, like, a really bad cramp or trolley horse or pulled muscle, he's like, it really makes that initial pain go away. But after about, like, a minute, it thaws just back out. Back out it, yeah. like, it just kind of gets you off the field. Does the North Quincy... Field have stands and a booth and all that stuff. Uh, Creedon Field has stands. They don't have an actual press booth, but there's a little area up the very top where. Th so they could they feasibly in like a do a scoreboard and stuff like they could feasibly host a game. Oh yeah, they have. They've had games there before. Yeah. Uh, handoff goes over to the right side. Richard Bacay, and nice run there by Bacay gets inside North Windsor territory up to about the 35 yard line. Uh, yeah, no, no, North Quincy's had varsity games at the field day before. They have a nice big scoreboard there. Uh, yeah, it's, the, not a, the it's, not, it's not as the big Boston as the, the one here at the, the Veterans Stadium, but it's a nice big scoreboard uh, over on Hunt Street there. Um, um, they prefer to have the varsity games here just because it's more of a crowd and yeah. a bigger area. But they had a lot of sub-varsity games here too, which I guess also that means during that time, I'm assuming, you know, the other sports are practicing. Now, is there a track around that one or is it just no. a field? Nope. So everybody uses Fax and Field, both schools, for track purposes? Yeah, for the official meets and stuff like that, yeah. yeah. All right, BK again on the carry and gets pushed out of bounds at about the 35. My daughter's started cross country at Fax and Field. Oh, cool. Cross country or the, or the, the track club at Faxon Field? It's they're call it's it's track. Is it, I think they're calling. Oh, okay. <laughs> to them, it's just running, and that's what they enjoy doing. I know for the high schools, the uh, the cross country course is up here at Pageant Field. Yeah. Um, where they run around there. Um, nice course. Oh, that's run, hilly. It is a little bit of a hill, Oof. but <laughs> when they, when you walk around, go around the back towards Black's Creek, and then you you do come up a little bit of a hill. Yeah. Uh, it's actually it's been a while since I've. I've <laughs> run it, you yeah. know, uh, but I'm I'm sure it's changed a little bit because the layout of pageant field has changed. Uh, but yeah, definitely a, a nice course there. I forget how 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 long it is. Yeah, the uh, cross country is famous uh, in high school, where especially visitors, like the biggest problem is um, kids getting lost that are kind of trailing. So the kids that trail behind. Um, tend to, you know, neglect the marker and just veer off path. And um, this, from talking to other cross-country coaches, they're, uh, it's not uncommon for younger kids who, who you know, start to fall behind to ha have a, a coach drive out and go look for them. Yeah. <laughs> All right, big run here by Somerville over to Real the left side. Number four on the – and in. goes in for the touchdown. Great run there by Gunsley Luis. And, you know, yeah. You know, you know, Somerville got it in. Good on them. Um, let's say, you know, something to, to call for being productive. But yeah, it's not a knock on North Quincy, too. Like I said, these are the backups that are in there for them right now. These kids are doing a g really good job going against what it's, you know, it's still the starters for Somerville. Let's see how this kick is. It's better than the punts. Oh. And the kick is going to be no good. Luca Alcaraz Valens on the attempt for Somerville. So uh, 48 to 6, our score here at the stadium. Is that the uh, Highlander color guard that was attempting to take the field with the flags? The cheerleaders? No, nope, looks like down on the other side of the field, looks like they were yeah. are out there. Yep. Now, see, their cheerleaders have the traditional Somerville colors. So again, the Somerville colors, but from, from your 
day and age where it's like red, the, white, and blue. Red, white, and blue. Captain America. Yeah, I'll say, you know. You know <laughs> Well, I know the, the Highlander logo, as you can see on our, our score there, um, is, you know, the red, white, and blue. and The royal the, blue, the, yeah. The royal blue, yeah. Now, Raider Yako now. Yaku? Yaku. Is he mad or focused? He's got the eye, is that the eye of the tiger? Yaku is, I'd say, focused. Focused. Yes. Determined. Determined, that's a good... Determined. Yeah. It looks like more of the eye of the tiger type look. Mm -hmm. You know, he's, he, he knows what he wants. He's focused on it. Yeah, Koo, of course, is uh, now the uh, more of the colonial look. Yeah. <laughs> um, still modeled after Dr. Yakubian, um, but still, uh, again, that, that f focused, determined look from colonial America. <laughs> Students at North Quincy, um, they voted to keep Yaku as, yeah. as it was and uh, keep him as the mascot, and, uh, but remain the Raiders. Um, yep. So that was voted on last year by the student population. And uh, if, when we get down to the gym at North Quincy High School, you'll see this has been uh, newly painted and uh, has the colonial Yaku in the, in the middle of the floor down there, and they'll be used on all the... Um, Logos and promotions and stuff like that. Now, you know what I always thought would have been great, but it never happens because they all get thrown away. Wouldn't it be great if North Quincy and Quincy played Thanksgiving and did like maybe if they would have kept them like the jerseys from 20 years ago and had like a throwback game? It would be interesting. That would have been fantastic. <laughs> throwback nights. All right, Charlie Baker comes out and is going to kneel it down for North Quincy, and that is going to be the end of the game here at Veterans Memorial Stadium. It was all North Quincy early and often as they jumped out to a uh, a big lead in the beginning of the game, Damian, by a score of 28 to nothing, and uh, they just compounded on top of that. And uh, big congratulations for North Quincy again. They just went out uh, and dominated Somerville from the beginning, uh, and got to give credit to Somerville at the very end there, though, was trying to make something happen, and they got their six points on the board. Uh, North Quincy. Still, this still, this once again for people watching at home. This is also a COVID regulation now. You know, because you s just spent an entire game tackling and face to face with somebody, but got to keep it safe. No, no, uh, you know, well, high fives. So they go out and uh, they're going to wave across the field to each other and uh, salute each other for for the game. But either way, big game there for North Quincy. And um, like I said, Damien, it was kind of a, a great way to start the season for the Raiders yeah. uh, to get out here, um, a get the rust off themselves, and um, and you know try to see what they have and um, just get the starters out there and, and you know try to do some different things and see what they can have. And um, unfortunately, towards the end for North Quincy, the starters came out, but it was good preparation for for the season and to get get things going. Yeah, look uh, look forward to Westwood next week. Folk, just talk. Just here to talk about Westwood now. <laughs> uh, well, so e either way, I get big victory here for the North Quincy Raiders. Uh, and as you said, Damien, next week on Saturday, September 18th, uh, North Quincy will be back here hosting Westwood High School uh, for game number two for North Quincy uh, and to get things jumping off. And it will be a double header for QA TV next weekend uh, on next Friday, the 17th. Yeah, yeah. Quincy at home. Yeah, Quincy Oliver High Ames. will be against Oliver Ames. And Oliver they get Ames on the Saturday. Tigers. The Tigers of Oliver Ames, yep. Uh, and then uh, Westwood in North Quincy on Saturday night here at the stadium. And Westwood are the Westwood golf carts. <laughs> <laughs> the I believe they are the, the Wolverines, I believe oh, they okay. are. <laughs> so, all right, well, uh, while we have a check in second, we want to thank uh, Ryan McWade, who's on camera here tonight, doing a great job. And also Chris Potter, who is our director and engineer here in the booth. And Damien Ritchie, thanks for joining me here. Always and, uh, a pleasure, John. Coming out here and helping out. 
So I'm going to head on to the Summerville bus because now I have a craving for Anastakaria. Got to go hit up Davis Square. And get your maple glazed bacon <laughs> donut yeah, as well. Yeah, that's Union so. Square. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> All right, we're going to final score here at Veterans Memorial Stadium, North Quincy 48 and Summerville 6. For Damian Ritchie, Chris Potter, and Ryan McWay, want to thank you all for tuning in to this edition of QA TV Sports. My name is Jonathan Clary. Thanks, everyone, and we'll see you next time.